G'day trendsetters, I'm Jom, that's J-O-M with Gravel Cyclist. I'm coming to you today with a video where I show you the new features and weights of SRAM's latest SRAM Force ETAP Access electronic drivetrain. This version is known as SRAM Force ETAP Access Wide. Wide is in a wide ratio of gears, particularly for a two by drivetrain, something I'm really stoked about. I reviewed the original Tramforce Axis ETAP drivetrain, which is 12 speed, just like this version here, and I've linked that review in the description below. Tram realized there was a serious hole in their drivetrain lineup, particularly with adventure type cycling and touring, and if you ask my opinion, that hole also crossed over to gravel racing because not everybody wants to push a one-to-one -one gear as their lowest option. This version promises to be better with wider gearing, so let's get cracking. First up is the crank set with 4330. That's 4330 chain rings and a wider Q factor of 2.5 millimeters on each side, making for an increase of five millimeters overall to the Q factor. And here's a closer look at the crank. Now because they adjusted the Q factor, that also means the chain line has been changed by 2.5 millimeters as well. All of these changes ultimately led to better tire clearance. More on that in a moment. And here is the non-drive crank arm. And you can see here the dub wide axle. Let's get these components onto the scale. Now that weight is going to include the pedal washers. They are required. You're looking at 698 grams for the crank set. Here's another close up of the rear of the crank. You can see the shifting pins, ramps, etc. And this new crank design uses a 94 millimeter bolt circle diameter for these chain rings if you are worried about the increased q factor of this crank set there is a component manufacturer who produces a pedal set that features a short axle and reduces the q factor on each pedal by three millimeters so that can definitely solve that issue here is the bottom bracket, and this is the English thread variant. This is SRAM's dub, DUB bottom bracket. And the crank set I showed earlier will work with any bottom bracket provided it uses a dub bearing interface. The bottom bracket will also work with 68 or 73 millimeter shells, courtesy of the supplied spaces. So let's get all this onto the scale. Seventy seven grams for the bottom bracket because of the wider spacing of the crank set That also means a revised front derailleur which promises more tire clearance That has always been an issue with previous generations of the ETAP front derailleur So this solves that and this front derailleur will now clear 700 C by 45 millimeter and 650B by 2.1 Let's demonstrate the extra clearance for the battery installed. I don't have a frame lined up for this just yet there is a something in the works more on that later so if you look from above you can see there is extra clearance right here there's the back side of the derailleur beneath you and the front on view and again another top view onto the scale i'm going to weigh the derailleur with the protector in place and the uh, piece of plastic that's used during setup that'll roughly substitute for the battery weight and in focus there 170 grams so that's close enough this is the wide ratio 10 to 36 force level cassette it won't be as light as a red cassette for obvious reasons, but it is quite a bit cheaper. So when this cassette is paired to the 4330 chain rings, you're looking at a high gear of 4.3, a low gear of 0.83, and an overall range of 516% onto the scale. 
and you're looking at 302.5, 303 grams. And here is the Force ETAP Access Wide Rear Derailleur. And just like its shorter cage brother, it features the Orbit Fluid Damper, which functions just like a clutch. Rather, it uses fluid resistance than a mechanical clutch. That likely saves some weight. As you can see, slightly longer cage. As is clearly marked here, this derailleur is intended for a max of 36 teeth, but I assume some of the tinkerers out there will probably try and push the limits of this derailleur. Incidentally, this derailleur will handle SRAM's other 12-speed road cassettes, so that means the 10 to 28 and the 10 to 33 ratios. There's some interesting possibilities with this derailleur. And whilst the cranks that I showed you earlier, right here, is designed for two by. If you have the one by version of this, with say a 36 tooth chain ring, and this derailleur with the 10 to 36 cassette, this would be a really awesome setup for cyclocross, or a really great setup for one by gravel cycling, especially when you don't need super low gears, but you would love a really tight cassette. Generally, I've found the one to one ratio works nicely for climbs up to say 10 to 12 percent. Anything above that, well, you're going to be struggling unless you're really, really, really strong. In fact, I'll overlay this chart that shows all of the potential gear ratios and how they stack up against the competitors' gear ratios. These are the new Paceline rotors, and these are meant for road, but obviously they will be just fine on a gravel bike. So let's get those onto the scale. You're looking at 157 grams, or for the pair, 315 grams. And real quick, that's the back side of the road there, and it uses the center lock standard. Drivetrain is kind of useless without a chain, so let's stick that onto the scale. You're looking at 275 grams uncut, including the master links and plastic bag. This is another set of rotors that SRAM kindly sent me. This is the SRAM CLX-R rotor in 160 millimeters. It's a very sharp looking rotor, I reckon. There's the back side, center lock interface. Let's get them onto the scales. 131 grams, the pair. 261 grams. This is the left side shifter brake lever and I'm going to set it up European slash USA style which means this will actuate the front disc brake it's not motorcycle style that's uh, very popular in Australia where the left actuates the rear brake okay so onto the scale and also following it is the SRAM force level hydraulic caliper and required hose to make it all work that adds up to 407 grams. What's really impressive about this stuff is how miniaturized these levers have become. When I first saw original prototypes of hydraulic anything for road, gravel, etc., they're much bigger and much bulbous. And to think they've got a reservoir squeezed in here and electronic for uh, the shifting, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. And here's the right side shifter. And in case you missed it, there is a shifting battery in each of these. It's a CR2032 coin cell. Very cheap, very easy to replace. You see the green light there, the LED. I haven't paired these derailers yet, obviously, with these shifters. So onto the scale with the caliper and hose, etc. Obviously, fluid's going to add a little bit of weight when that point comes. You're looking at 420 grams the batteries in these shifters last forever i'm still on the original batteries in my 11 speed etap system for the shifters that is pretty impressive stuff and they've been used quite a bit over the past three years finally you might have noticed that the finish has changed to a gloss finish on the SRAM force etap access y components that change will also apply to the regular version of SRAM force etap access so what's next i have a project bike that these parts are going to be hung onto so be sure to watch this space for details of that build in the meantime be sure to follow the gravel cyclist instagram presence 
and like the Gravel Cyclist Facebook page because I like to post teaser images of products like these during the review process. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I'll see you in the next video.